Welcome my friends, 7 Days to Die 1.0, experimental at least, has finally launched and I will show you how to set up a dedicated server free on your PC for the experimental version but the same pretty much works for a regular version once it goes stable. So don't you worry, I will show you how to get this done. I will also show you how to do some basic configuration and reuse an existing save if you want to migrate it say from a single player or a different PC and use it on your dedicator server. First of all, bring up your Steam client. You have to go and make sure your games and tools enabled because otherwise the 7 days to die dedicated server will not show up. Right click and hit properties. You don't want to just install immediately. You want to make sure you go to betas because if the game is an experimental, which it is right now at least, you have to tick in latest experimental unstable build. If it's stable, don't worry, just leave it default and it will keep itself up to date. Do it like this, close it and then install and choose where you want it to be. I'm going to choose your C because I have a little bit of space there. It will download it from Steam and install. So that's going to take maybe a few minutes. It tells me 12 minutes. We'll see. And here I'm done and it actually took about 10 minutes. Uh, you then go to your Steam here, you see it has been installed and it's the latest experimental. Right click and you can go to properties. Where you want to go is install files because you want to browse to where this is located on, well, wherever you install it. So you're going to hit browse which brings you to wherever it is installed. And the important thing here to look for is the serverconfig.xml. You want to right click on that and you want to edit it. I would definitely suggest that you download Notepad++, which is a really good editor. It's free, makes it a lot easier, but open it up with whatever editor you have. And now it's time to configure it. You can change the name to whatever you want to have, the description as well. I would definitely suggest having a password. I'm just going to hit one here just for my benefit here. It'll tell you which server port, which is going to be useful later on for port forwarding. We're going to then go down. There's a bunch of things that you can enable if you want to, but uh, read a little bit on the right side if you're not really sure. And if you're really not sure, try to not mess it up. If you malform the file, meaning you delete something that you shouldn't be, such as a backslash or something, the server probably will not start. Important is here, game world. Most of us probably want to do a randomly generated world. So you have to change this to RWG. You have to go down to the size and depending on what it is, we're going to keep it at 6144 because we're just going to make a small one, for instance, and you can make it big, of course. Game name, also important. Of course, you want to call it something other than just my game and a bunch of other configurations that you can change. But for now, we're just going to save it and close it. Once this is done, take a copy of that file as well. The reason being when the server gets updated, this file will get refreshed and basically get emptied. So you do want to have a copy when you're done. Otherwise, you're going to lose all your settings just because the server gets updated. We're then going to go and set ourselves as admin. So we're going to go to app data like this and go down into seven days to die and we're going to go into saves and we'll see a server admin.xml file that I am going to be editing as well. And we scroll down here and you'll see you can put in a user ID. We're going to remove these comments here. What you're looking for is the Steam64 ID of your Steam username. Go use something like Steam ID Finder and try to find this and then just paste it in. Make sure you remove the, the comment and uh, save it. And we're now ready to launch it, which will start up the server if everything was done properly, because it is going to be generating a, a world that might take a little bit longer. And it should be started now. You're looking for basically start game done, which means it is working. If you're getting red errors and stuff like that, you probably messed up the server config.xml and you might want to try to basically back out Go back to here, uh, go to properties, and then we're going to go to install file and you have to verify integrity of the tool files and it will basically re-download anything that you changed and messed up and try it again. Normally, if you make no changes at all to the server config.xml, it will start up without making the, those changes. It will just be a very basic default world, but it will come up. So we're going to log on to it. What you want to go is join a game and connect to IP. 
Type in localhost and the port is 26900 by default and hit connect. And you'll see invalid password because of course we had this really, really difficult password of, I shouldn't tell you actually, and submit. It will verify your Steam, Epic Online Services, EAC if you have that enabled and then it will log you in. The game is loaded. We're going to spawn in and it will create the player and you'll see that we will be playing on the server that I just set up. See how simple that was? See? We're here. I've joined the game and I'm now playing on the server. So, everything good, right? No, no, y y yes and no. Now, normally, if you are on the local area network, you will have no issues. Now, if you want to have your friends connect from outside of your network, you have to do what's called port forwarding. Port forwarding is something that a lot of people who have never run servers run into problems with because it requires you to go to your router and configure it. I will paste the link of a port forwarding guide that I made for Palworld. The basics still work for seven days to die. It's just slightly different ports. What you want to make sure for one, firewall. This normally gets opened by default. When you start it, it will pop up a dialogue saying, do you want to add this to a firewall? Click yes, don't decline it because then you might have to reinstall and reinstall or do this manually. So accept the firewall prompt that you get. Now the port forwarding is needed for 26900 TCP, the one we connected through and UDP from 900 to 903. You do have to do that. I will also leave the link to this place because it has another link that allows you to go to a site that where you can select a different routers and get, let's decline that, and get some specific help on certain router models. It can be a little bit of a challenge to get this done, but if you are able to connect to your server yourself, like you saw I did just now, it means the server is running. If your friends are not able to connect to your IP, your external IP, and I will explain that in the video as well for the port forwarding guide that I made for Palworld that you should check out, if they cannot connect, it likely is because your port forwarding is having issues. So what if you run into some issues and you want to check the logs? You want to go down into the local folder of where the game is installed or the server is installed rather. Go to logs and you'll have a bunch of log files in here that you can check out. You can also go to the 7 days that I server underscore data and go to the output log. This is basically the same log as you see in here. So you can go back and see, hmm, what was happening here? Did it give me any errors, etc.? Normally, if it fails to start up, it'll be somewhere at the end and it'll basically just exit. So go to the bottom and that generally gives you a good view of what might have gone wrong. At least gives you an indication of where to start troubleshooting. But let's assume you have been playing uh, Seven Days to Die already, a single player maybe, on a different PC. You want to migrate and use the same save. It's fairly easy. First of all, we're going to edit this file again. We're going to put this up. No, no, no. Leave that like that. And we're going to find this place where you're specifying the game world and the name, etc., etc. What well, we're also going to go back to the folder structure. I'm going to type in app data because we need to go and find the saves. There are two things to think about. If you are running a single player on this PC and then install a dedicator on the same PC, you don't need to move the actual save file or the generated wells file because it can be accessed from the dedicated server in the same path. If you are moving it to different PC, you do have to go here, go into the generated wells and pick up whichever file that you help or folder that you have been generating. You might be wondering which one is that? Well, go into the log file. You can see here if you scroll up somewhere to the early part of it, it'll tell you it's generating Mofixoko territory. And that's the territory file, which is basically a collection of all the data that represent that specific world that you have generated. If you are moving to a different PC, make sure you grab this one and put it in the same general location, meaning the general worlds, and it should pick it up. If you don't know where this is and there is no folder, you just have the server generate something else and this folder structure will be generated and then you can copy this in. You also want to go to save here and collect the correct save file, which will be named same as the Mofi Soxo territory that we just had in the generated world. So those are the two structures that you want to copy in. This is basically the save file 
for the game itself. It's not the world, but it's the save file for the player and whatever you have collected, your skills and everything, the player profiles. And then we go back here. Instead of saying RWG, we then want to call it the Mofi Xoxo territory so that it doesn't generate something else. My game, of course, has to be the same as the save game is because I just kept it as my game. I don't have to change anything. If you have that as VED, you have to change the game name to VED as well. I don't know if you necessarily need to change this because this mod, the world generation, it, there's no harm. Change it to the correct sizing as well. And that should be it. Save it, start it up, and it should be picking up the specific save that you had wanted to migrate for wherever it was. Now, again, if you are starting the dedicated server on the same PC as you were playing your single player, you don't need to move anything. You don't need to change anything. You don't have to do anything except for making this change for the Mofi Xoxo territory so that the server knows what save to pick up. And that's all there is to it. Really simple. Now you also want to make sure it don't just when you're done with the server, don't just kill it by Xing it. Go into the console here and do a shutdown so that it gracefully shuts down, saves whatever it's outstanding. Avoid having some corruption because you're just killing the process. Good luck and enjoy seven days to die 1.0. Experimental for now.